Good morning. I want to welcome you to our video service. It is June 7th, and as you can see, things are slowly getting back to normal. Slowly. It is really good to be back at Hope, and um, as we begin our service today, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Our call to worship today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heaven and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day to gather again together. Lord God, to worship you, to praise you, to exalt you, to celebrate, God, all that you have done for us. God, every day your mercies are new. Great is your faithfulness. And in our world today, God, we just are thankful that you have all power, authority, and dominion. We celebrate again today Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who was crucified, dead, and buried he descended into hell, but Lord God, he was raised again on the third day. Raised to life. Raised to rule. Raised to give us, God, victory over sin and Satan and death. We thank and praise you, God, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit in this season of Pentecost, Lord God. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is in us and with us and works through us. Lord God, today we pray for our world. We pray for our country. Lord God, in all the unrest, in all the violence, in all the racism and hatred that we are seeing visibly, we pray, God, for your healing. We pray, God, for your forgiveness. We praise God. We praise you, God, that you are at work even today to bring reconciliation to evidence God your grace and your strength in most difficult times we praise you God today for the life of Scarlett and we pray that you would be with Benjamin and Alyssa and Scarlett as they are still hospitalized and and um, trusting you God to to just bring health and well-being to this little baby we praise you, God, that you are with uh, Eleanor Lowe, and we pray for Josh and Alyssa and the things that they're experiencing. Lord God, today, too, uh, we ask um, in the lives of our young people that are graduating, whether it's from middle school or high school or from college or from our seminary, Lord God, graduations without the pomp and circumstance. I pray, God, that you just fill these young people with joy and celebration and the accomplishments uh, and, and in the future that you have for them. Praise you, Lord God, for where you have brought us in enabling us to meet together here at Hope soon. Praise you for uh, today and God that you, your promise that your grace is sufficient for all that we need. We ask even now, Lord God, for your protection upon so many that are in difficult places. God, we pray, God, for your just your kingdom to come. 
for your will to be done. Bless us in our time together. Bless this time of worship. Bless us, Lord God, in our community of faith. Bless your church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Hope Church friends and family. So glad you tuned in this week to join us and uh, worship together in spirit and in truth as the body of Christ. Um, before we get into a time of worship and song, let's, let's pray together. Father, thank you for uh, just your provision in allowing us to uh, begin, as Marty said, to get that things back to normal and uh, uh, be able to worship together in person would be great. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, at the same time, Lord, we pray that you would give us all wisdom for uh, when that time will be and um, just just give us uh, insight, God, on, on what's best to do for this body of Christ too. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and uh, pray that these songs, Lord, would just uh, turn our hearts towards you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. You are my vision, O King of my heart, nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best life by day or by night, waking or sleeping.
is risen from the dead trembling over death by death come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave from the dead trampling over death by death come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again come awake come awake come and rise up from the grave oh death where is your sting Oh, hell, where is your victory? No, church, come stand in light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Singing, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come stand in the light. Our God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Christ is risen from the dead, trembling over death by death. Come awake, come awake. Come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead. We are one with him again. Come awake, come awake. Come and rise up from the grave. raging at my feet I can feel the breath of those surrounding me I can hear the sound of nations rising up we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome I can walk down this dark and painful road I can face Every fear of the unknown I can hear. All God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake. 
lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm the raging sea, lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, he lives in us. His promises are true in His strength. There is nothing we can't do, yes, we know. There are greater things in store. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. Same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us, he lives in us lives in us. Greater is He that is living in me. He's conquered our enemy. No power of darkness, no weapon prevails. We stand here in victory. Greater is He that is living in me. He's conquered our enemy. No power of darkness, no weapon prevails. We stand here in victory. In victory. Yeah. Same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm the raging sea lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us lives in us. Thank you, Father, that um, as we sing that truth that your Holy Spirit does live and dwell in us, and uh, thank you for a season, too, uh, in the church calendar that we can um, just hear about this uh, incredible um, season, God, where you poured out your Holy Spirit and uh, just began the church body. Um, and we thank you, Lord, and look forward to, to hearing from your word today and um, to just be reminded, God, of the hope that we have in you. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kido and Katura. And welcome, Hope Church family. Welcome to the season of Pentecost and the first Sunday in June. The American author Travis Bradbury wrote, humans are creatures of habit. And he goes on to write, if you quit when things get tough, it gets that much easier to quit the next time. On the other hand, if you force yourself to push through it, the grit begins to grow in you. Certainly these have been seasons of change for us these last three months. We are creatures of habit, but each one of us have had to adapt. And I'm amazed at how fast change becomes new routines. For myself, tuning in Sundays to an online service, being home more with family, which has been a blessing. 
drive-by birthday parties. The weekly Bible reading schedule that we each have, that we're able to share together as we read and prepare for each Sunday's sermon. Phone and video conversations, having people call you randomly and to see how you're doing. Spending more time in prayer, I think I've been able to do that. And at the Hall House, we have a new routine. Friday night is now pizza night. But as I consider the routines, and as we begin to move a little bit closer to being back together again, I wonder what routines have we each developed that we can bring back to this body as we gather? Certainly we'll appreciate being home with family. We always will. Certainly the weekly Bible read readings will continue, and I would encourage you to continue to be in the Bible weekly. Will we continue to call people randomly just to ask how we're doing? Will we continue to spend more time in prayer? My hope and my prayer is that as we begin to move back towards being together again, and what a, what a, a blessing that will be, that we recognize how we've grown in this time of isolation, this time of being by ourselves in self-quarantine. And we can take those lessons and those new habits we've developed and bring them back to a church body here at Hope Church to make this place new and exciting, refreshing once again. I have some announcements for us this morning I'd like to cover. I have emailed out our Hope Weekly Prayer Notes and our calendar of birthdays and anniversaries. Also, our Bible reading schedule. You should have had that last night in your mailbox. I want to let you know that we are hopeful to be joining you here in our sanctuary on the 21st of June. That would be two weeks away. We've got some preparation time. We've got a bit of technical work still to do. But the goal would be to have a live service and an online presence from now on. So look to your email, look to Facebook. You should be getting some information, though, on coming back together again here, hopefully June 21st. I continue to encourage you to go to our Hope Church website, hopechurch.cc. In particular, our Church at Home page. And our Church at Home page includes our family devotion time. Last week, we talked about being revealed. This week, it is believing. So I would encourage you to look that up. Our weekly Bible reading schedule that directs you towards the following Sunday's sermon is going to be posted. Our online sermon library, of course, is there. Our Hope Giving page. Right Now Media, our online Christian library our online directory, and also our prayer request page. And I want to thank you for supporting the work that God is doing here through Hope Church. Offering is an act of worship. It's an act of faith as well. So thank you. I know that God's work is being blessed as you are being blessed as well. And as this is our normal time of offering, I would encourage you to consider when you have some time to go online or perhaps through the mail, and continue to support God's work here as we do it through Hope Church at Silver Lake. Today I'm going to be reading out of Ephesians. And this is Paul's letter to the Ephesians encouraging the church in Ephesus. A church that is by itself a little bit. A church that is fairly new. And here's what Paul writes to the Ephesians. He says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Amen. Good morning again. As Warren said, today is a day of preparation for when we are going to be able to have services back here at Hope. 
But even as we have services here at Hope, we're going to continue with our online service. For those of you that are attending that and enjoying our services together that aren't able to be here physically, we want to maintain our ability to minister in your lives. And um, so for those of you that are anxious to come back here into the church, be patient. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. It's not today, and it won't be next Sunday, uh, and we're shooting for June 21st, which is indeed Father's Day, and we will celebrate our Father's love for us as we are together on that day. Hopefully. It's all in God's hands. Isn't that just the way it's been these days? We have to roll with it, and... Um, and that's hard for an older guy like me, but we're, 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 we're making do. Today we're going to continue in our series, Witnesses of Jesus. Our text today is a continuation of what we started last Sunday. We're in Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Spirit is poured out on the disciples with that mighty wind and tongues of fire and a linguistic display and... and um. Well, our, our text today is a continuation of that text. And you have to remember that this is seven weeks, seven weeks after Jesus ascended. I'm not ascended, resurrected from the tomb. Seven weeks after Jesus resurrected from the tomb. I'm guessing the disciples that were gathered together in Jerusalem following the ascension they're still waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I'm wondering what that Sunday morning started like. Certainly there must have been a time of remembrance and celebration of the resurrection. And then for this Holy Spirit outpouring. Wow. And we, we, we spent time in that last week. This being, this being the first Sunday after Pentecost, as we continue looking at Acts chapter 2, I want you to also know that, that this is in the church calendar. This is a Sunday where we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate that God the Father is at work, that Jesus Christ the Son is at work, and that the Holy Spirit has now been poured out. We call it Holy Trinity Sunday. This is a time where we often would Celebrate together in the reciting of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father. Um, you know, that, and then I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I'm just thinking about the disciples as they were gathered in Jerusalem. In this home. Celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And, and, and this Holy Spirit comes upon them and. And of course, as we talked about last week, there was God-fearing men in Jerusalem and there were, there were those that were mockers. And it's in this context, as we read today from the book of Acts, that Peter preaches his first sermon. I still remember my first sermon. Maybe I don't want to remember my first sermon, but fortunately for me, my first sermon was in the context of a classroom. In seminary, and um, there again, it was just professor and students. And I knew I was in a place where people wouldn't be too critical. They wouldn't be too critical. They might be a little critical, but they wouldn't be too critical. Peter, Peter, he's unaware as he wakes up on this Pentecost morning. He's unaware of what the day holds for him and for the disciples. He hasn't planned. He hasn't prepared. He hasn't invested time in preparation. Understand, this is incredibly amazing. The spontaneity of God in, in, in picking this date, Pentecost Sunday. So we're going to read from Acts chapter 2 again, but we're going to start today with verse 22. Last week we read 1 through 21. Today we're going to read verses 22 
through 39. And this is Peter speaking. He's speaking in Jerusalem to the God-fearing people who have come to celebrate Pentecost at the temple. And he's speaking to mockers, those who claim these disciples are filled with wine. Peter says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up so that we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies, your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you have crucified. And I have to turn the page, and I've messed it up. Because I've got two verses left to finish. <laughs> I hate when I do this. First day back and I'm okay let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you've crucified now when they heard this they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles brothers what shall we do and Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that this is your word. Thank you that you can speak a word and don't doesn't need to be read. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God, that even today as we have read your word, God, your Holy Spirit is speaking into our hearts and lives. You have called us, Lord God, to be witnesses of Jesus. In the celebration of Pentecost, God, you have poured out your Holy Spirit upon us. He is in us. God, your power is real. Your work, God, is being done. And Lord God, we pray that you would make us uh, just the witnesses you need us to be in, in a world that is desperate for Jesus Christ. God, 
come even now and speak. Lord God, give us ears to hear and hearts to respond. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I've entitled this sermon, Share the Package. <laughs> it's kind of a unique thing because when we look at, at this text, Peter, as I said, he wasn't really prepared for the activities of this day. And yet, isn't that just the way God works? <laughs> how many of us, how many of us know exactly what lies ahead for us each day? Certainly we have our calendars, we have our day planners, we we have our hopes and dreams for each day, but we have learned in these past weeks that things change in a short amount of time. Whether we're ready or whether we're not, there are surprises. There are days when things go according to plan, and unfortunately there are days that don't go according to plan. But as we consider the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, as we consider Peter and the rest of the disciples being in this position where all the attention now again is upon them, not because they've asked for it, but because God has orchestrated that. And in the work of God, there is this incredible package. Peter gives testimony of God's personage. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's what we confess in the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, one God revealed to us through scripture in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And in the course of Peter's sermon, he recognizes the initiative of God the Father. It is God who has. It is God who has planned. It is God who has done. Peter also acknowledges, though, the special reality that God worked visibly through Jesus Christ. Teaching, miracles, wonders, signs, death, resurrection, ascension. Even now, being exalted, having dominion from the right hand of God. And now, on this Pentecost Sunday... Peter testifies of the Holy Spirit being poured out. You men of Jerusalem, you are witnesses to the power of God working in us and through us. This testimony of God's person is also included in the package of Peter giving the testimony of God's word. For those of you that were with us last Sunday, we, we in the verses of, of Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 21, Peter quotes from the prophet Joel, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's an Old Testament reality as well as a New Testament reality. And it's amazing because they didn't have the Bible then as we have it now. Their, their Bible ended in, in, in Malachi. They only had the Old Testament, or what we call the Old Testament. For them, it was the scriptures. And today, in our text in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through verses 36, Peter shares about the patriarch David. You remember him. You know, we celebrate him as a shepherd. We celebrate him coming into his own as he was a courageous little boy and killed Goliath. And then he became this great ruler, making Israel this incredible kingdom here on earth. And Peter quotes from Psalms 16 and Psalm 132 and Psalm 110. And he wants Nothing more than for the people who are listening to understand that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, 
is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one that all of the Old Testament was about. Even though the Gospel of John hadn't been written yet, Peter would simply like for the listeners, those that are in Jerusalem, to believe, as John writes in his gospel, chapter 20, to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, there would be life in his name. See, there is testimony in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is testimony in God's word. And most importantly, for the listeners, those who were God-fearing as well as those who were mockers, Peter addressing them in the public arena wants for these people more than anything to know that God's promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. This past week, past weeks, they've been really hard. We've been experiencing in our country, um, especially in these past days, I uh, in this racial charged society. Just a lot of frustration, a lot of pain, a lot of things that have gone on in, in, our, in our country and in our world that haven't been reconciled. This passage is appropriate for us. This passage is appropriate for our world and this need for reconciliation, this need for reconciliation, it began thousands of years ago back in the Garden of Eden. And when Peter says this promise is for you and for your children and for all who are, all, uh, for all who are afar off, he's talking about all of us. Because it was in the Garden that God came looking for Adam and Eve as they had sinned. God asks, where are you? He already knew, but he asks, where are you? Then he asks, did you? He already knew that they had. Did you? And it's in that context that God comes to those who have sinned, those who have rebelled, those who have destroyed the perfect relationship that he's intended for men to have with God and for men to have with each other. makes this incredible promise. I'm going to send, I'm going to send someone. He's going to be your descendant. He's going to be of your seed. And the serpent will bruise his heel, but he will crush the serpent's head. And this is the testimony of God's promise. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God in his grace is able to take all who have sinned, all who are separated, all who are in strife, 
And it is God in his promise who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And it is God who will reconcile us to one another. This is the package. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit coming to us. Transforming us. Enabling us to be the witnesses of Jesus Christ in a world that desperately needs a Savior. But it starts with you and it starts with me. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Make us witnesses of Jesus. And in so doing, Lord, bless us and keep us. Lord God, make your face shine upon us. Be gracious to us. Lord God, lift your countenance upon us. Give us peace. Enable us, Lord God, to testify and be witnesses of your peace in our world. Amen. God bless you this week.